Hi, this is Nicole Javali, and I am presenting Evolution, a text set. And this set covers the unit Evolution, which is currently a fifth of the new New York State P12 science learning standards. And so hopefully students will really develop a strong understanding of these topics. And this text set will hopefully facilitate that learning. So to start, I want to talk about scaffolding the students' understanding of academic texts because whether or not we use them heavily, students are going to see these types of texts over and over again in their academic careers. And so I would like to really support students' ability to use these texts that way in the future they can use them easily. And so the text here is from Khan Academy. Um, it explains all the core concepts of the unit. Um, and it has embedded in it links that define core vocabulary words and videos on the side that students can use if they need more help. So hopefully with all of these sort of supports within the article itself, students are going to be able to use this article and get this information well. And hopefully eventually they can use texts that don't have these supports. Although, yeah. In most of our work though, I'd rather use texts that aren't quite so dry and that connect students' existing literacies. Um, and that can mean a lot of different things um, because students are going to students are diverse just as we are and so some students are going to like rap and some students are going to like comics and so I've included examples of both of those that are going to really support students in understanding different concepts and evolution. So I'm going to play a little bit of clip. I apologize now for the audio quality. Okay, so that song is Adaptation. It's by the group Animal Tracks. Uh, it is really fun. It's definitely from somebody who's super fluent in the discourse of rap. And um, I really love this song, so I hope students will. Um, in contrast, we also have um, a comic. And this is just one panel from that comic. Um, but the comic goes on to talk about survival of the sneakiest in the title. And it talks about different ways that behaviors can be evolutionarily fit. Because it's not about being strong, it's about having babies. Um, and so this takes some really interesting um, visuals to add to students' understanding. And, you know, can really help students understand this concept because it's presenting it in a medium that they already know and enjoy. So not only do we need to connect students' existing literacies, but we really need to show them diverse presentations of people in the field that we're working so that they can feel like they can be a part of this field as well. Um, and so the term windows and mirrors gets used a lot, but I think, you know, core here is just making sure that we are providing students with ways that they can see themselves in what we do, both sort of their current selves and their future selves. Um, and so this scientist, Dr. Marianne, um, Median Andrande, I apologize for the pronunciation, um, is really cool. Uh, she does some really great work on spiders. Um, and she's also a Jamaican immigrant to Canada. So um, yeah, she talks about both her upbringing and also her really cool work. There are so many spiders, it's amazing. And yeah, um, I think this is a really great addition because it's supporting this evolutionary unit spiders are uh, sort of self-sacrificing. It's really cool. You should check it out. The article, it's in the doobly-doo. Um, yeah, so not only do we need to provide students with sort of language that reflects their own and, you know, experiences that are going to help them see themselves and things, but also sort of alternative ways of expressing themselves and engaging in this material and um, I'm sure some of you already know uh, um, John and Hank Green they have a whole set of social media things that go alongside of their work um, and some of their work is really cool and in this particular video uh, Hank Green presents information on speciation which is a core concept um, in evolution and 
Also, at the end, like in every other Crash Course video, um, that's a series, uh, he invites everyone to engage on social media. And I think allowing, you know, encouraging students to engage in that way that they already engage with the world um, with creators of content that's relevant to our classes is going to really help bridge that sort of school home divide for them. Um, and also offer them an outlet for expressive literary practice. Um, you know, I think nerd fighters, as they call themselves, uh, you know, there's like a vibrant forums and there's a lot of people who do creative work there and letting students sort of have an eye into that community. If they want to engage in that sort of literary practice, they can do that. And I think that's, you know, something that's really nice to give to our students. Um, but I think one of the most important things here, though, is that we need to develop our students' critical literacy. And that's their ability to read and evaluate texts and analyze the motivations of the authors um, and the values that those texts um, are promoting both implicitly and explicitly. So uh, here I actually have a pair of texts. Um, one is an article from uh, the African Wildlife Foundation and the other is a video from HHMI Biointeractive um, which is doing a project in Garangosa National Park in Mozambique. Um, and the African Wildlife Federation article is interesting. It presents a lot of really interesting information um, clearly, um, but definitely comes from the point of view of a conservation organization. Um, and that's a problematic point of view. Um, you know, the excerpt I've included here uh, talks about uh, comparisons of the weight of ivory tusks. Um, from the Victorian era to now um, and how that's decreased um, but it doesn't really acknowledge that you know part of the demand for ivory in the Victorian era well most of the demand was from Europe and so there's a lot of like sort of implied vilification of um, people in Africa uh, without acknowledging their own complicity in this situation in any case um, in the video, which uh, searching for tusk, uh, sorry, selecting for tuskless elephants, um, this video is very different. Um, you know, it has both white and black scientists. One, like one scientist is from Mozambique, uh, and it talks about this change and like this evolutionary change in a way that's very different. Um, it's much more ambivalent on whether or not this change that elephants are going through is good or bad. Sorry, I'm not sure if I explained. Uh, evolution, uh, elephants are undergoing some evolutionary change with regards to tusks because of poaching pressure. So there's more tuskless elephants. But yeah, so this video is more ambivalent on whether or not that's a good or bad thing for the elephants, whereas the Wildlife Federation thinks it's bad. And so I think it's important to like develop students' ability to look at these texts and compare them and see what motivates both authors and... Um, develop their critical literacy skills um, and you know finally and it may seem a little bit silly but you know student adolescents uh, ninth and tenth graders who uh, this unit is designed for um, they're more motivated to read when they have choice in what they read and so I think it's important as a teacher to develop curate a set of texts um, that they can choose from and not just the text I've already presented which might be integrated to a larger unit and everyone would use but to, you know really have a collection available um, and you know when students see us as readers and when we you know are reading and sharing text with them outside of just sort of what's required for class it creates a positive positive literary environment for them um, that really promotes reading um, and that sort of lifelong literary learning that we want, um, we all want to promote. So uh, these three texts, um, they're all from the New York Times, um, but they're on really interesting topics. Um, whale size evolution is a really cool topic, um, and it's something that you know we don't understand very well because we don't have a ton of whale fossils, honestly. Um, evolution of fish and because of pollution is something that you see. Um, well, mostly we don't see that, actually. Mostly we see fish die because pollution winds up so heavy. Um, but the changes that happen to animals because of what we do to the environment is really interesting. Um, and I think it's something the students would find interesting, both in this unit and in a unit on um, ecology. Um, and then finally, uh, in bed bugs, this is 
an example of speciation um, and it's really interesting and I'm sure all of us have had, uh, well not all of us I'm sure many of us have had bed bugs at some point it's something everyone sort of sees at this point uh, they're super prevalent in New York and so for students to be able to see you know articles about this integrated hopefully will pique their interest but in any case creating sort of a set for students to choose from is really going to help develop motivation and interest. Um, and so sort of to close out, um, you know, we need to be making sure that we include a lot of genres and formats of text, both to, you know, provide students with a lot of ways to under understand difficult material, um, and also to support the development of, you know, the literacies in these different genres. You know, I don't I know I'm not fluent in every genre, but I do hope that I can help my students develop their own fluencies um, by using these texts when I can. Um, I think we need to provide texts that students can compare and analyze and really develop their critical literacy. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways that we can do this, and this unit has one example, but I think it's something that's really important being able to identify the ways in which we have bias and other authors have bias even when they're sort of not aware of it um, and the values that we express without explicitly expressing them is that that's really important when you're making decisions and you know going through life so I hope to develop that in students um, and I think said critically selecting text that way we can develop that literacy uh, is going to really help students um, and I also think it's really important that we integrate diversity at all levels of our curriculum um, it's not more than just like a very special episode, you know. We shouldn't only study black people during Black History Month. These things need to um, be integrated at all levels, you know. And if we consider diversity as we're developing our curriculum from the beginning, uh, it's going to become a natural part of that curriculum. And students are going to be able to see themselves as scientists and, you know, not feel as intimidated by these disciplines. And I think it's really core to developing students literacy um, and is respecting them and respecting who they are and providing them with models of who they could be um, so uh, yeah thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed this presentation links to all of these are down in the doobly-doo and you should check them out some of them are really great um, they're all really great, honestly, and I hope that you enjoy this presentation and have a great day.